it's all about. We also understand that there are character arcs. This is what I wrote about in my book, Creating Character, that there are patterns like the education plot or the redemption plot that you see over and over again in fiction. And indeed, that's what lends fiction a lot of its appeal to readers and what makes it compelling and rewarding for the reader. But there is no excuse for flat-out stealing from other writers. If you're going to do a book that has some similarities to other things that have been written, Make it your own. Find a way to make it your own. First, transplant the location someplace completely different. Make the characters different. Do a gender swap or an age swap or a nationality swap or whatever it is. Change the central chase aspect, the MacGuffin, to quote again from Hitchcock. What is it everybody wants? What is it they're going after? Change that. In the book I just mentioned, Creating Character, I talk about the danger of basing your characters on real people. I wasn't talking about plagiarism charges there. I was talking about the possibility of a libel suit when somebody thinks that a a character is based on them and so they end up threatening to sue. You avoid that by making sure no character completely or even significantly resembles a real-life person. Yeah, you might be inspired by somebody you know or something you've seen, so you take one salient characteristic from that person, and then you put it in a character that looks nothing like that person and otherwise acts nothing like that person and lives in a completely different place and on and on and on. Even when you're using character arcs and plot archetypes, you can find ways of making your story unique and special to you. And that's what you need to do, because you don't need this kind of trouble in your life. And by all means, never give an interview where you act like it's okay to steal from other artists. It's not. So don't ever say that it is. My interview today is with Dave Chesson, a name you may well know, especially if you've ever used KDP Rocket, if you've ever done any online advertising or marketing, if you've used Amazon ads or anything that requires you to come up with key words that will target the right potential buyers or readers to your books, then you have very likely used KDP Rocket. And if you haven't, you should. In addition, at his Kindlepreneur website, he has all kinds of books, programs, courses you can take, things that are really useful and targeted toward helping you boost your presence and make your writing career a success. Here's what Dave had to say. Dave, thanks for being on the podcast. Absolutely. It's really good to be here. All right. Standard question. If you could give one piece of advice to an aspiring writer or somebody who is writing, what would it be? Well, one of the things I would say to them is is that, you know, it's important to have an audience. And so think about the marketing side of your writing as well. Uh, That'll help to bring your career around to the next level. But if you do that, focus on one marketing aspect at a time. Don't try to do everything at once. That's really good advice. And of course, the standard word you hear from people is, I love to write. I hate the marketing stuff. But <laughs> like it or hate it, it's it's part of the writer's world today, don't you think? Well, I think there's two types of writers out there. The ones that win the lottery and just become famous off of just putting something out there and the right thing happens. Mm-hmm. Or those that worked really hard, believed in what they wrote and take the road where they get it in front of the right people. Those lottery winners seem to be kind of few and far between these days. <laughs> or is that just my imagination? Well, you know, if you really dig into the history of even people in the traditional sense of writing, you will find that it was filled with rejections, with uh, roadblocks, with medical conditions, with life situations that would show that this was no easy road. Most of the time when you talk to, I mean, we're talking like Nebula, Hugo Award winners, real New York Times bestsellers. Um, you know, I've worked with multiple, with lots of them and you will always find that the sentence they almost all say is, yeah, I was like an overnight success, but it was 10 years in the making. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Now your enterprises for want of a better world word are called, you call it a 
Kindlepreneur, and your site is kindlepreneur.com. I'll tell you, whenever I do any of my red sneaker stuff, I always start by saying, what is a red sneaker writer? Well, Dave, what's a Kindlepreneur? Well, it's a combination between the writer and the marketing side of it. You know, uh, there's a lot of incredible writers out there, and it's really hard for them to get their book in front of the right people or their writing. And so my website, Kindlepreneur, is devoted to teaching authors about that side of it, about understanding how we can get great writing in front of the right readers so that there's that beautiful connection that people can either benefit from your book or have a better life because of it. Let me just say, you've got a lot of really valuable material on that website. Uh, One of the best blogs I've ever seen. How'd you get started with the blog? Well, a lot of it was just kind of asking the simple questions. You know, um, how do you create a great book cover? How do you write a book description that, you know, helps to actually sell your book? It, It just comes from being, having been a writer and then being a consultant with publishing companies and just thinking about what is that step that authors need now so that they can be the next great author that they truly want to be, that their books can be read by the people that they want it to be read by. How do you get started with all this business? You you say on the webpage that you're not a writer yourself, and yet here you are uh, delivering great services to writers. How'd that start? Well, by writer, I mean, I grew up not believing that I would ever be a writer. Uh, I was, I was, I grew up with a a severe case of dyslexia. And mm -hmm. through that, through the years, I always believed that I was a failure in English. So I never paid attention in English class. I was a D minus uh, English grade kid. I went into physics, uh, nuclear physics, uh, and just went as far away from writing as possible. So when I say that, I really mean I was not believing that I was an ex Ernest Hemingway or something like that. But later on, though, I was at a party and um, it was actually from this fitness group. I used to do triathlons. And this one guy who was really bad at kind of delivering a message or telling a story was the life of the party. And it was Mm. because he just completed an Ironman triathlon and everybody there wanted to know his story. And it was from that point that I saw two incredible things. Number one, This guy had what everybody wanted. He had a message. He had something that people were actively looking for. And number two, he was in the right location. If he'd gone to a ballroom dancing party or, uh, you know, just a regular soiree, people would have been like, oh, that's cute. It wouldn't have been a novelty and they moved on, but not in this case. And for me, that was exactly the approach I took with Amazon. Amazon's an incredible market that allows for authors, any author to get a, uh, to get over the traditional roadblocks that used to be there, can get their words out there and get it to the biggest book market in the world. But understanding how Amazon works allows an author to take their message and tailor it just a bit so that it fits for an existing market. When I did that, that was a huge game changer for me. Since then, uh, I think I just crossed over $400,000 from just book sales alone. Wow. I, I mean, we're talking about a guy who's dyslexic. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. being able to do that. And from there, from my analytical mind, like I, like I said, I'm a numbers cruncher. I'm a you know physics nerd. Uh, <laughs> it was the approach to understanding Amazon that helped to create Kindlepreneur and helped to really make that simplified for other authors so they can benefit from it. You've got a lot of people on your web page swearing by your programs and ideas and blogs and books and whatnot. A lot of satisfied customers. Well, you know, it's coming down to just really knowing that information, but knowing how to distill it so that anybody can use it. I think mm-hmm. that was one of the biggest powers for myself. Again, I'm no Ernest Hemingway, and I'm sure some of the grammar Nazis out there would probably hate some of my writing per se. However, though, when you can take something complex and you can make it very simplified and it's something that helps to benefit fit people's lives, you don't have to be Ernest Hemingway. Yeah, and there already was one of those. So, you know, why not do your own thing, right? (laughs) I just, I love his writing. I'm not going to lie. I'll switch between him and Kurt Vonnegut. Oh, yeah? Oh, that's my my favorite. I got to meet him once before he died. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's almost as good in person as he is in his books. It's beautiful. Did he autograph a book for you? Yeah, that's one of my biggest Did he do the drawing? Did he do the drawing with the signature? No, I didn't get to see that. Oh, but it was amazing. I met him once at a, a program as well. But getting back to the serious subject, uh, you got a podcast too. Tell me about the podcast. Yeah. So for me, there are a lot of people. We write articles on Kindlepreneur that can be like 
two to 3,000 words long. I mean, we really want to get in the nitty gritty, but many people cannot sit down and read those articles. So instead, what I did was I created the Book Marketing Show podcast where each episode is a lesson. It, I go over everything you need to know about a certain thing to publishing and book marketing or marketing your writing. Then I bring on a guest who is an example of what you just learned in action. You get to hear Sweet. how they took this, applied it, and then see the results. And what the coolest part about this is that through it, you get to see some of the things they learned the hard way. Mm -hmm. And you combine that. So it's almost like knowledge plus experience. And that to me builds intuition. I think intuition is one of the greatest things somebody can learn, especially for marketing. Wait a minute. Can you learn intuition? No, learning <laughs> intuition comes from knowledge plus experience. Ah. And that builds intuition. And intuition, I believe, is synonymous with what we now call mastering things. The masters out there are just people who have really good intuition and can think faster and make better decisions because of it. All right. We've been kind of dancing around this, but let's get down to the core uh, element. What I've heard people say that the most valuable is the most valuable tool an uh, author can have in today's world. Tell everybody about KDP Rocket. Sure. Well, you know, one of the things that helped me to really succeed was finding out what people wanted to know on Amazon, right? What mm -hmm. is it that people type into Amazon when they're looking for their next book? How do they choose these books? Which books do they want? Which ones are, you know, the ones that are making money? And I used to have this hardcore crazy Excel sheet that required people to do extra steps and it was ridiculous. Hmm. So I got together a programming team and we created this program called KDP Rocket, which by the way, uh, the name's changing soon to Publisher Rocket. Um, that's some brand new news. And that's because... We used to just focus on Amazon, but we're right. now working with Barnes & Noble and iTunes so that we'll be incorporating them as well. So this program is going to help authors to best position their book so that the shoppers on Amazon and in the future, Barnes & Noble and iTunes can find their book better and make a better purchase. That makes a lot of sense. Does, does that mean Kindlepreneur becomes Publisherpreneur? Yeah, I, I've gotten that <laughs> question before. I just feel like Kindlepreneur just kind of <laughs> rolls off its tongue. The other cool thing was just recently Amazon actually called me the Kindlepreneur. So I was like, all right, a high five from Amazon. Seriously? Yeah, they just posted um one of my articles about keywords for fiction books. They said, and they just flat out told people like, read this article. This will help you to sell more fiction books. And it just talks about, and they said straight from the Kindlepreneur. So I was like, all right, cool. Amazon high five. Yeah, that's not a bad so, pat on the back. No, so I, I, I don't know. I'll probably keep it. My yeah. thing is, is that while I do call it Kindlepreneur, it's really about a uh, book, ebook, book marketing across the board. Well, of course, uh, that business about finding keywords, though, that can be invaluable because I found in my own experience that sometimes it is completely counterintuitive. That is what I think might be the most, uh, the best targeted keywords turn out to be not so at all. Yeah, absolutely. I, I could go on about the, the things that go into them, and I do. Um, if you just type in Kindle keywords into Google, you'll find the article on it. But a lot of it comes down to three things. Making sure the keyword is something people type into, into Amazon, that people mm -hmm. buy books that show up, and that the competition isn't so great that you can't get your book to the top. If you can hit those three things, congratulations, you will have sales consistently. If you miss on one of those, you will have some sales. And if you miss on two of those, may the force be with you. <laughs> That's kind of a tough a niche to slip into something, you know, something that on the one hand people are interested in, so they'll type it in, but not so interested in or so many people interested in that there's too much competition. Very true, except that a lot of authors don't really think about it from the market side. I, it's kind of funny. We're all book readers. Um, and that particular fiction keyword article that I talked about that Amazon promoted, that was a that's it's a really good one because it talks about how to come up with the phrases that people use. You'd be surprised, but when people go to describe the story in their mind, they don't type stuff like science fiction book. Mm -hmm. They don't. They might type it in, but that's the beginning of their journey. The truth right. is what they really want is a sci-fi military alien horde book. Right. That Those words right there just described an exact style of writing. And guess what? Using Rocket, you'll find that there are over 200 plus people per month typing in that exact 
crazy mm -hmm. phrase. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the art and science to keywords in a nutshell. Right. Well, what, this is probably already obvious, but what are your thoughts about Amazon?